Uh, welcome to EdChat Interactive. Uh, my name is Mitch Weisberg, and I'm your first host tonight. Uh, my job is to introduce you a little bit to the platform, and I'll give a, a very quick introduction to EdChat Interactive. Uh, our goal at EdChat Interactive is to take all the best practices that exist in schools and to spread them as efficiently as possible. And we felt for a while that typical webinars couldn't do that, didn't do that because that's what the webinar is exactly the way people learn. And uh, live training, where it's tremendously engaging, um, it's not really scalable. It's hard to reach a million five hundred thousand different schools um, it, with with wide bodies visiting each school. So um, in searching around for different ways to do that, uh, we landed on Shindig, which is uh, the platform that we're using today. And we think that Shindig is an ideal way uh, to share information and do it in a way that allows people to learn rather than just attend a, a webinar. And the reason why we think this is, is, this is so important is to, is to allow us to do group work. So you'll see in this presentation, Mark is going to talk about a, a topic for a while, and then he's going to pose a question, and he's going to encourage you to get back into groups to, the, to discuss the, 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 um, the question. Mark is an internationally recognized speaker, um, education writer. He's the author of some really incredible books. In fact, as I look at my bookshelf, which is right behind my computer, I see all three of them. I have grouped all of them together. Um, but Role Reversal, if you haven't read Role Reversal, um, which was the, uh, the 2013 Best Professional Book by Teacher Library Magazine. It is a, a tremendously great, uh, great book. The Five Minute Teacher, which I've also had the pleasure of and reviewing, uh, is another great book. And then uh, his most recent book, Teaching the Eye Student, is, uh, is where we're going to focus today. And Mark is so busy. He has another one coming out in 2015. So he keynotes all over the place. He has a really great TEDx talk, uh, which you can head over to his website, markbarnes19.com, and check that out. Uh, it's, a, it's a really incredible uh, video if you haven't had a chance to look at it. Uh, you can follow Mark on Twitter, at markbarnes19, and read uh, his blog and his musings on Brilliant or Insane. Uh, and so without further ado, I will hop off of here and I will bring Mark up. Hey, Steve, uh, thanks so much for that kind introduction. Uh, so again, we're, we're sort of all getting used to Shindig. This is my second go round on Shindig. And uh, the, the first time was sort of just getting used to it. And we, were, we were playing with it. And uh, what Mitch and Steve both said, we learned, you know, just by having fun. So have fun. Uh, we, you know, clicked in and out of each other's pictures and started chatting and introducing ourselves. And after a while, it became a lot like a faculty meeting. It was sort of, you know, someone was up in front like I am now talking. And then there was a bunch of people just sort of carrying on their own conversation. So, you know, if you're a teacher, you know, that's sort of what a faculty meeting is. Um, so hopefully you'll, you'll get a chance to just listen to me for a little bit. That's one of the things I love about Shindig is it's not your classic conference. It's not a keynote. I'm not going to sit here and talk at you guys for 45 minutes. Uh, I'm going to say a few things. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about myself and what we're going to talk about. And then actually I'm going to ask you to group up. And uh, I know Steve and Mitch uh, will help out with that. Um, but it's real easy. Again, you hover over someone and click on them and you can join them and just quickly introduce yourselves and then talk about the topic. So um, once again, thanks, Steve, uh, for that nice introduction. I really appreciate it. Um, it always sounds intimidating to me when people talk, um, say that I'm an international speaker. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of online stuff internationally and I've been to Canada. So that, that's, that's sort of my international flavor. Um, I, I do write, I taught for 20 years, so if we're teachers and we're wondering, is this guy at least a teacher? Uh, I was a classroom teacher for 20 years, and uh, I taught both middle school and high school, English language arts, and um, after a really long time of sort of being that in-the-box traditional teacher, uh, I changed everything, and really the role reversal talk. I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but... Um, after I did that, I, I wrote uh, the book Role Reversal, which was really about changing roles. It was about me getting out of the front of the room and, and sort of putting the kids in the center. And uh, some of that stuff will filter into tonight. But uh, eventually I got connected with Corwin and, and was happy and honored to be part of this 
Corwin Connected Educators series. And uh, if you haven't read a Connected Educators book, I, I hope you will. Uh, you can just go over to the Corwin website and, and search Connected Educators and you'll find them. Uh, my book's called Teaching the Eye Student. But there are many. Steve introduced me. He and Tom Whitby co-authored a, a great book in the series. And a lot of other people, if you're on Twitter or if you're into social media, that you probably have heard of. Um, I think we're up to, I don't know, 10 or 12 books right now in the series. I've got another one coming out in February. And the, the nice thing about the series is they're quick. These are you know, 50, 60 page books that you can devour in a night and they're really practical. It's sort of here's something that you can learn today and you can take into the classroom tomorrow. And it's all about doing some of the things we're doing now, this idea of getting connected and learning from one another and getting kids to do the same. So we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. So that's uh, a lot of what I'm going to say is based on teaching the eye student and uh, my next book in the series, which is five um, skills for the global learner. So uh, if we could move forward, Mitch or Steve, whoever's moving my slides, and we'll, we'll bump ahead to uh, the next slide was my contact information, which Steve already showed you. Um, so again, reach out to me on Twitter because I'm on there all the time. I love it. Um, yeah, you, you had it and you passed it. Um, we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, skills for global learning today. We're still too far ahead now. Guys, we want to go back to um, what skills does the I student bring? So we're still kind of getting used to moving slides on Shindig as well. Um, you can do screen sharing on Shindig, but I was scared to death to do that today. I said, I'm, I'm too afraid that I'm going to get to a screen and never be able to get back. So um, what we're going to talk about are, is an I student. So you've got my book, Teaching the I Student, which we just had up a minute ago. This is the slide um, we want. And um, so I thought I would just start by saying a little bit about uh, what an I student is and my connection to the I student and then have you talk about these things. So we'll group up in a few minutes and after you chat about these questions, I thought if we actually get you guys to try what I'm doing. So maybe after you talk in a small group, somebody could come up and say, here's what we talked about and you get a chance to see what this is like. Um, the I student, you guys um, have I students in your classroom. Uh, today's student is an I student. They come equipped to learn in the digital world. And to me, that's really what an I student is. Uh, you know, they have iPhones, they have iPods, they have iPads. They have it all. And they come ready to use it. Unfortunately, in many schools and classrooms uh, around the world, we continue to tell them to put those things away. And one of the things I talk about in teaching the I student is that we have to get away from that. We have to shift our thinking and education to embrace the technology that the kids already have. So with the idea that I students are kids who have uh, digital tools, uh, they're somewhat familiar with social networks, of course they really love games, uh, they have some skills. But I think that there's a lot of skills that they don't have. And in fact, many of them think they're, they're a whole lot better with the tools than they really are. And we as educators today need to help them to hone the skills they have and to develop new skills that will make them more efficient in the digital world. So what I'd like to do is to have you answer these two questions you see on the screen. And the first one says, what skills does the I student bring? So if kids walk into your room and we know that they have devices and we know that they're connected to the internet, um, what skills do they have that we could use already? And then from that, we want to transition to the next question in, in white. What skills does the I student need? So I'm suggesting that they, they still don't have everything and we need to help them with that. And you might say, well, I'm not sure I have those skills, but we'll talk about that too. So what we're going to do now, you see it says break into groups of three or four and discuss. And uh, remember, what we're going to do is just don't, don't get intimidated by the technology. If you hover over someone and you click, you'll be with that person. And we're doing it. So let's do that now. I'm going to jump in with you, and we'll chat a little bit, and then we'll come back. So find someone and start talking. Uh, I think I got back up to the uh, to the stage here I was um, in the middle of a conversation got yanked out um, so uh, sorry about that. 
bad ladies. That was, uh, it's like I was whisked away. Um, so I, I, we've we've got some conversation going, and I don't know how much you got into our questions here, because uh, I, I know in our groups um, there was a, a lot going on at first with just sort of talking about Shindig and how it works and the idea behind it and the collaborative piece and working through the glitches and all of that. So. Um, it, it's easy to spend a lot of time talking about that. But then uh, we started chatting a little bit about some of the barriers that are, that are involved, um, uh, the idea of, of being in a, a larger school district and trying to adjust. And there's so many different ways you can go about it. Uh, you can pull in laptop carts or you can go one to one. You can have kids bring their own devices. And th there's so many different things if you're in a large school uh, that need to be addressed. So. Those were some of the, the conversations we had. And then talking about how to share uh, outside the classroom, uh, like we're doing now, the idea that if, we, if teachers are um, trying to make a transition to using a, a, any kind of digital platform or web tool or anything social network with students, that they need to then get together and collaborate and talk about the stumbling blocks and the successes. And if you're in a bigger school or you're trying to work across buildings, it would be important to have uh, a platform like this or um, to use a, a back channel, Twitter or Voxer or something like that. So uh, that's something to consider. Um, I, I know there was at least one other conversation. I'm not sure, maybe one or two. So I'm wondering now if we might have someone who wants to bail me out a little bit and come up and experience the stage and uh, share what your experience was. Oh, and it looks like we have Nikki uh, coming up. I didn't know I clicked on that. <laughs> Go ahead, you're okay. on. So what did you want me to do here? Just talk about what we were talking about in our group or? Yeah, just share your thoughts. Well, I think we were in our group mostly in agreement that the kids to come prepared with their knowledge of the basic coursework, I think Stella from Argentina was talking about that, whether it's their language arts, social studies, science, math. And Tammy from Hawaii was discussing that the kids know how to use the devices for games, for communicating with their friends, um, and for other things like that. They're not afraid to jump in and use that technology. But I think we all came to the conclusion that kids really aren't ready to use those technologies in an educational setting from just doing basic internet searches and knowing how to look at those internet searches to then applying whatever they're finding online or how they use things online in an educational setting. And so those are things that are definitely going to have to be walked through and modeled and not just assuming that because they're a kid, they're a digital native. Digital <clears throat> native doesn't necessarily equal knowing how to use that technology within the education environment. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Um, yeah, the thing about digital natives, I love that phrase, and, and that's something that I talk about a, a lot in teaching the iStudent and in um, the global learner. The idea that uh, teachers often think of kids uh, as being really knowledgeable with technology, and, and in some, some ways they are. Uh, they, I, I had kids, in, I taught seventh grade for a lot of uh, years, and kids could come and teach me things about certain tools that they knew that I didn't know, and then we would start using them. But, um, you know, what, what Nikki brings up is important is that while they might understand how to manipulate tools, how to, how to get into them, how to share content, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's any pedagogy there. And I think that's what we have to work on. And uh, so we talked about skills. So what, what kinds of skills do we want? And I was wondering, before I, I'm going to ask in a minute to go to my next slide and talk about five skills for the I student. But um, I was going to see if maybe we wanted anyone else wants to come up and, and share or chat for a minute. If not, I'll, I'll go ahead. No pressure. It's a low pressure environment. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over. Um, these five skills that I think we need to be teaching kids and then maybe we can talk a little bit more and, and maybe get somebody else up here before we run out of time. Um, 
Mitch, I don't know if you're coming on or if you're going to run my slide. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. Um, and I'm getting a message here as well. There's so many things going on in this room. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so if you take a look at this, uh, five skills for a global I student, and, and what I'm doing, by the way, you guys are getting a sneak peek at uh, my, my next Connected Educator series book, which is coming out in February, and it's called Five Skills for the Global Learner. And, and these are really the skills that I identify. And, and this is just based on my own research and my own practical experience in the classroom and collaboration like I'm doing here and that I do on social networks. Um, you know, I, I don't want to say that I'm, my skills are the be-all, end-all. And, and in fact, I bring that out in the book and say I think this is really the beginning of a list that educators will continue to build. Um, but as you can see here, these are skills that I think we um, teachers need to help kids hone or develop because uh, students are going to come to us with varying abilities and some will have some of these and maybe just need to sharpen them and some will have none of these. So I just wanted to, to go through the skills uh, briefly, say a few things about them and then maybe have you guys chat a little bit more uh, and, and sort of give your reaction. So the, the first skill, creating and sharing digital information. I think this is that one that we tend to assume that kids are good at uh, because, as, as I said, the I student has tools and they're connected and they're on the Internet and they're on social networks. Um, you know, I don't know if you how, how often you poll your kids on it, but I used to start my year with that, even with my middle school kids, and would, would ask them about their experiences on social network. And, and I found that it was amazing. Uh, even in seventh grade, you know, I had uh, I, 70, 80 percent of my kids were on Facebook. And, and then one year I did eighth grade and I was shocked to find that 60 percent, I had I think about 106, 107 kids, 60 percent of them were on Twitter. So, and they even told me, in fact, this was a few years ago, that they were sort of gravitating to Twitter and moving away from Facebook. Uh, kids were starting to feel like Facebook had become their parents' place on social media. So they wanted to sort of escape to somewhere else. Uh, so now they're on Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest. But they are there. So I think, again, we tend to assume that they know what they're doing. What we want to do, I think, in honing these skills is uh, we want to teach them how to create good content and how to share it in an efficient way because the, the thing about I students and global learners that I talk about in my next book is that they are the content curators of today and of the future. They are going to be creating the content and gathering the content and sharing the content with learners worldwide. Um, and, and that's a really important skill that cannot be underestimated. So we want to help them hone these skills. And I think the conversations that you want to have at your schools uh, and, and with your colleagues is uh, what goes into that. And, and I, could, I could do a whole hour on, on talking about that exact thing, but I don't want to. I just want to kind of hit some of these skills and then have you talk and maybe we'll check again at the end. Um, using social media, these two go together. We're, because most of the content kids create right now is in the social network world. Um, again, we need to model for them ways that they can use social media, not just to talk about the, the party that they went to or the, the present they got for their birthday or the girl they like or the boy they like, uh, because that's really what they're doing a great deal of. But we want to show them the power of social media as a way to demonstrate learning and a way to, um, to become teachers. And, and to me, and I've had some interesting debates about this with you know, what our role is and what students' role is, but I'm a big believer that we need to teach our kids to become teachers because ultimately in today's world, everyone will become an independent learner. And if we can help our kids navigate the social world, uh, they will be more efficient at it. We can't just assume that they know how to do it. Um, digital publishing, our kids are publishing content 
all the time, and they're starting at a very young age. As, as early as kids in first grade, our kids today are publishers. And what's so different from when I was their age, and I know we've got various ages in the group here, um, but, you know, for me, uh, I, I'm a writer, and I, and I wrote for my high school newspaper, and, and that sort of got me started in writing, but, you know, that was a different world back then. Uh, everything was hard copy and publishing was tricky and if you were going to write a book you needed an agent and you had to find a publisher and it was nearly impossible and in the world we live in today everyone can publish and they can do it immediately and kids are doing it and we need this in mind and have this discussion with them often the second you post original content to social media you're a publisher and and that's a a real interesting dichotomy of looking at what publishers are today versus what publishers were even 10 years ago and and that's what's really crazy about the social media world is the speed with which it evolves uh, 10 years ago you couldn't do nearly what you can do today so our kids are publishing and they don't really understand the gravity of being a publisher uh, we need to teach them that. We need to model that. We need to do that by using the many tools that are out there. Uh, we have to introduce them to, to Twitter and Pinterest and Facebook. And, uh, and some people say, well, it, it's tough to do that with a younger audience. You can start with tools like um, Today's Meet is, is sort of a, a Twitter clone, but it gives you control over the environment. And it's a great way to sort of tiptoe kids in to the, the bigger, the giants like Twitter and Facebook. But um, you can carry on conversations with kids in class and out. And again, that's what we're talking about today, the idea of collaborating outside of the classroom and demonstrating the power of digital media and publishing to our kids. A personal learning network, uh, I, I know that um, you know Steve Anderson who introduced me tonight could he could probably do 10 hours on this and uh, he and Tom Whitby's book uh, is really a lot about um, building this personal learning network and this is something that's not just for adults and, and I really talk about this a lot in teaching the I student and five skills for the global learner the idea that we want our kids to start building their networks or actually doing it so to say to start doing it is is really a misnomer because they're doing it right now when you ask your kids about their experiences on social media they'll tell you that they're on it and, and kids will be proud to say well I've got 400 friends on Facebook um, but then if you start talking about a personal learning network do they really have that do they understand that and a, and a question I would challenge you to ask yourself tonight is do you have it and I don't know, I, I wouldn't presume to know. I know there's a, there's a few people I saw in here that I've seen on social media, and that's great. Um, but we all need to build these networks because we're all global learners. And if we're going to model this for our kids, we need to be involved in it ourselves. And this is sort of a, our own little personal learning network here. Um, but think about your own. What does it look like and how do you build it? Who is important to you? Um, you know, I, I take my, my uh, personal learning network very seriously. People that are friends on Twitter and on Facebook, uh, you know, these people are, it's sure they're family in some cases and close friends in other cases, but the majority of the people in my PLN are educators, um, teachers, administrators, upper administrators, authors, people who talk about best practice, who do the things that we're doing right now. And uh, that is true power. And we need to teach our kids that and help them develop a legitimate PLN very early. And, and boy, there's so much rich learning that you can do in the classroom. Uh, even with young kids, I, I, there's a piece in Teaching the Eye Student uh, about a teacher named Kathy Cassidy who teaches first graders Twitter. And boy, the stuff that she does and the things those kids do. You can find that on YouTube, by the way. If you if you searched first graders on Twitter on YouTube, there's some really powerful video on there from Kathy Cassidy. And it, it's remarkable stuff. 
So I get people out when I'm doing these conferences and we talk about Twitter and they say, yeah, but I teach first or second grade and they can't do it. And I go, oh, really? And I show that video and it's, it's great fun. So, so get your kids talking about social learning. Aggregators for content curation. Uh, these, these are terms that uh, are trendy, but they're, they're not well known. Uh, content curation is something that is becoming very important in education. And it, it speaks to these five issues here, the, the skills that I'm talking about that I believe that kids need and teachers need. Um, this idea that we are curating content every day. When our young students um, put together a portfolio of writing or, or build projects in their science classes, they are already curating content. They're creating information that can be shared and it can be shared digitally. And that's the power that we have at our fingertips today. And then it extends outside the classroom. And that's what we're talking about today is this idea of collaborating outside of the classroom. We want to instill this um, love of learning and the idea that we are curators to our kids and have them thinking of that when they leave the classroom. Um, you know, I, I don't want to get too far off on a tangent, but I'm, I'm someone who rails against traditional homework. And if, if you read my blog, Brilliant or Insane, or any of my stuff, uh, you'll see that I, I'm very hard on traditional homework because there's major research against it. What I'm not against, and I think some people misinterpret me sometimes, and they think, oh, that Barnes guy, he's crazy. He doesn't want our kids to do anything outside of class. And it, it's so untrue. What I believe is that when we teach kids the skills that are on this screen, they get so excited about learning because this is all about learning in the digital world. And they get so excited about creating original content and sharing it using blogs, using social networks, using places like Figment and Storybird and all of these things that they love it. Teach them the phrase. I started teaching my 7th and 8th graders content curation. They had no idea what it was. And I said, it, it's an important phrase to understand because you're doing it every day. An aggregator pulls it together. If you use Twitter uh, and you get your kids using Twitter, um, teach them that a hashtag is an aggregator. It's a great way to teach the word aggregator, which I think is a tough word for kids, um, even high school kids. It's a difficult word. And, and it's a hard concept to understand. But um, I, I used to like to use hashtag because kids kind of understand hashtags. And I said, you think about the hashtag pulling all of those tweets together into one feed, uh, that's an aggregator. It's aggregating it and pulling it together. And there's so many great aggregators out there when we're teaching kids blogging and publishing content. And there's things like Flipboard and Feedly and so many great tools that you can then organize the content that you're creating and collecting into categories. And our kids are literally creating libraries that they can have in the palm of their hands. And I know you have them as well. Um, and it's amazing. Uh, I, I made a comment to half jokingly to one of my kids the other day when they were talking about reading and I said you should always have something to read and they said well dad you don't have anything to read and I said yeah I have thousands of books right here um, not to mention the blogs that I read that I pull in with my aggregator and my Twitter feed and my Facebook and it's all here so we need to get kids to understand this so these are five skills as I said I'm, I'm not the be all end all of the global skills um, I, I'm someone who's uh, had a great deal of experience working with these things and researching them and talking to people like you at conferences and at schools about what works. So this was sort of my beginning list for a short book in the Connected Educator series. And I said, I think this list will grow. We will build it. So I'd like to um, have you guys do that. Thank you, um, whoever changed my slide. Uh, which skills are most challenging? And uh, I thought it would be nice to see if we could maybe group up again and, and maybe not go as long this time because we were, we're at about 10 or 15 minutes left. And um, just ask this question and talk about it among yourselves. Based on those skills I showed, 
Uh, what's challenging to teach kids when it comes to global learning and teaching them social media and content curation uh, and digital publishing? So if we could group up and maybe get someone to come back up at the end, it'd be great. Okay, so I think I'm back on. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, so, so, so put a stop to those sidebar chats. This isn't a faculty meeting. Um, so what, what I want to do is just sort of wrap up a little bit, and, and I thought it would be nice, again, if we could just get one or two people to share. And uh, another thing um, Stephen reminded me of is you've got your that raised hand in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. So if you ever say, well, I wouldn't mind popping up and saying something, you could raise your hand and we could do it that way. And it looks like we're going to get Tammy. And um, so I'm hoping she's going to share some thoughts from that discussion. Tammy. You know, uh, Nikki and I got off on a little tangent in our group. We were talking about. Happens. Um, um, <laughs> we digress a little bit. Obviously, we're teachers. So <laughs> um, but we were just talking about ideas for. Um, now I even forget what Nikki said because I'm just thinking about what I said. I'm sorry, Nikki. Um, I was I was just sharing something, a story I had heard of uh, schools using Twitter. And it's a really easy way. Mm -hmm. Oh, we were talking about T uh, PLNs for teachers. And how can mm -hmm. we expect students to do that right. when teachers do that? And so I brought up um, a story I had heard of a really great way to introduce kind of schools and teachers to the Twitter sphere. Um, and that was pre this one school created a hashtag for their school. And teachers weren't required to uh, have a Twitter account, but a lot of them were encouraged to, and so they did. And they would just take pictures and post things on Twitter that were happening around, around school and in their classroom. And so that Twitter feed was put up on the school website. <clears throat> so we talked about how that really broke down the walls um, at that school. And so people, parents, and other teachers, and it kind of really put the school in a positive light. And so that really encouraged a lot of teachers who got more interested in it. And mm -hmm. that's a really good headway to get into, say, you know, a service day for teachers. Now having teachers teaching teachers and modeling how to join Twitter, how to use it in their classroom and share some of the things that they're doing. So it was like a super yeah. easy way to kind of begin the process of building a, a PLN. Yeah, I, I think that's fantastic. I, I've heard of some schools doing it, but not many. How were, how did teachers act at first when the, someone started that idea and said, hey, let's do this? Were they afraid? Did they not want to do it? You know, it wasn't it wasn't in my school. Um, I'm just literally just finished a technology and education course mm -hmm. last week, and that was one of the okay. situations that came up that we were talking about. So it wasn't my school, but I imagine okay. that everybody – well, not everybody, but there's always going to be some that come with a lot of hesitation. Mm -hmm. So that's just in the field. You know, people get yeah. so complacent and comfortable in complacency. So. Yeah, those are good words, um, complacent, comfortable. I think I, I'd say that so often that, you know, we live by that sort of, that's the way we've always done it in education, and it's hard to get away from that. Uh, and Twitter can be a scary thing. I, I, I ask that question because I, I talk a lot about it in the field and I get so many people. It amazes me when I'm out at conferences and there's a lot of people who are not on Twitter. And um, I got to a point in conferences when I, I would start and say, we're all going to get on Twitter. And I put up slides and said, here's how you do it. Get on your device. And you're either going to fight me and say, I'm absolutely not going to do it or you're going to participate. And once people get on, they really, really love it. So Mitch is telling me that Nikki wants to come up. So um, let, let's let's bring her up and thank you for participating. Tammy, appreciate it. Nikki. Now, I was just going to add to what Tammy was saying. I um, have been in schools that use the Twitter hashtag. Um, last year I was at <clears throat> Hoover High School in Birmingham, Alabama, and we had the hashtag for our school. But not only that, um, my assistant principals, Jennifer Hogan and Holly Sutherland, started Alabama Ed Chat, AL Ed Chat, every Monday night. Mm -hmm. And if any teachers participated in that, they received pro professional development credit. And we could also use that professional development credit um, for those, you know, the teacher work days that you have when the kids aren't there, but the mm -hmm. teachers. 
So if you had enough professional development time, you didn't have to come into school for that professional development uh, teacher work day. And so that got a lot of our teachers involved and into using Twitter. But we also had Twitter parties in the library for US Ed Chat because I also help lead US Ed Chat that brings the various state chats together mm -hmm. quarterly. And so we would hold parties in the library and have food and drinks and have the Twitter chat up on the large screen television. Mm -hmm. And you would have novice there and experts there. And so we helped each other. And the cool thing was, is the teachers, when they first started tweeting, they'd, they'd see their tweet go up and get so excited about seeing their tweet out there. And then if somebody said something to them, they were like, oh, someone said something to me, what did I do? And so, you know, we're helping them. And by the end of that one hour chat, what I heard from a lot of the teachers was like, what, it's, it's over, how to, how to end so fast? And it, they, it just caught on from there as they started to connect with other teachers around the globe and learning from them. I had a teacher who was on his second career. He was in his mid 60s and just started using Twitter and he was coming, to say, I just found a really good friend and guess what they shared with me. And so that, that's really awesome. And we also use that hashtag to keep our, our parents and community informed. I don't know if you remember, we got snowed in in Birmingham last year with 700 students trapped in my one school. Mm -hmm. And so our parents, no problem communicating. They all knew about our hashtag. And so we kept them That's informed great. throughout the entire time through our hashtag on Twitter. That is fantastic. Those are great stories. Nikki, thank you so much for sharing that. You know, the idea of, um, and this will work in the classroom. And uh, I have a, a great video I show when I'm out talking to teachers doing what Nikki was just talking about with with the adults but this teacher was doing it in class and had a hashtag and the kids are all um, participating and it's great because she talks about how somebody says oh look you know someone responded to me or someone said something to me and the kids do that and in this video there's the the chat is streaming and they're typing stuff in and then they look up to see and they go oh look I said that or somebody goes oh I saw what you said and it's really great for participation I mean, kids get excited about it and and when people start using it I love the the anecdote about someone um, saying you know I found this person and they shared this thing with me I mean this is what personal learning networks are and I think you teach this to your colleagues you get them involved and then you carry it into the classroom and and someone mentioned earlier the idea of modeling it you know saying I do this too and then sharing it with your kids and saying you know that I mean the, the example there is so powerful and if you can share that with a kid in class and say look at what I did I met this person and they shared this thing with me and maybe it's something you're using in class and and I used to do that and kids were fascinated and I would teach them a new tool and they they're you know they're also so they go, hey, Mr. Barnes, where'd you learn this? And I loved that because I'd say, well, I learned it on Twitter. So, you know, and then, of course, they want, they go, oh, I'm on Twitter. Can we do Twitter? So um, it, it really is powerful. It, it engages kids. It engages other uh, professionals. It's a great way to communicate along with the other social networks um, that are out there as well. Uh, is, does Stella want to come up and share? Is that what I'm getting? Maybe we'll get one more in before we run out of time here. Stella. Yes. Stella I from Argentina. Teacher, uh, myself in the classroom, but in my flip classes, because internet is not allowed to be used in our schools. Yes. And I use Twitter as professional development through chat on a model. Yeah, that's fantastic. And from coming from Argentina, that's exciting. We have a global audience. Yeah, I, I think there's a thing with, with social media and, you know, really Shindig is a social network when you think about it uh, and, and the power of the tools for global learning. I mean, this is what we've got, you know, when you bring people from all over the country, somebody was from Hawaii, right? And then uh, in Argentina, and it's, it's really amazing to connect people. And this is a skill we have to teach our kids that you know when we say well why are you on Facebook there's a great question to ask your students why do you use Twitter why do you use Facebook and see how many of them say for learning and and I would be surprised in the beginning when you ask that if a lot of kids say 
I use it for learning. But then when you share these types of experiences and then you get them to do that and you say, well, let's let's see if we can't find someone from another state. Let's see if we can't find people from another country who will communicate with us on our blogs, on our aggregators, on our social networks, and the kids will light up. You'll see, it's amazing. The first time I had a student who, when we opened up our blogs and a kid got a comment from someone in Canada, I think it was, and he was just, he lit up. He said, look, look, Mr. Barnes, someone from Canada commented on my blog. And I said, you're a publisher. Think about that. And the kids are like, well, what do you mean? And I said, you created content. You shared it with the world. Isn't that what authors do in books? They share content with the world. And that was really, truly amazing. So um, uh, I think that brings us to the end of our time. So I, I, I had a few things that I wanted to say. Um, what, what do we got going on? I'm blocked. Okay, Mitch, thanks. Um, and to, just to wrap up and, and then see if Mitch or Steve want to say anything before we close. First of all, I, I want to say thank you for being here. Shindig is, as you can tell, is a very new platform. It's it's uh, it's really different from other things. If you've ever done a webinar, I mean, they they're so sort of one way, and and although you can back channel a little bit on the webinar by typing stuff into a message board, it's really nothing like this. It's not as interactive. Um, same with Twitter and the things we've been talking about. They're great. I love hashtag chats. I'm a big part of those. And, and they're great, but people say, boy, it's so fast, and how do I slow it down? And I find myself getting distracted. And it, this is a really neat way to get together uh, in this classroom. So I appreciate you guys coming um, because it's, I, I know educators are so super busy. So to, to take time out to come in and to share and to learn, and hopefully you've learned something tonight. And, and I've certainly learned a lot from you guys and appreciate it. Um, Follow me on Twitter. Tweet at me. I'd, I'd love to talk more, um, and, and we can extend this conversation there and in other social networks. Um, and on my you blog, are Brilliant you, or Insane. Aren't you, doing, aren't you doing another one in two weeks? Oh, wow, Mitch, thanks. See? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be back here <laughs> on Shindig in, uh, what is that? I don't know if you have the date. I don't have it in front of me. I think it, I think um, it is the 17th. The 17th. And, um, oh, boy, if you guys can make that and bring friends, it would be fantastic. Um, we're going to shift gears, even though there's a little bit of digital stuff involved. Uh, we're going to talk about assessment. Um, I have a new book coming out in February called Assessment 3.0, uh, Throw Out Your Grade Book and Inspire Learning. And um, if you've ever heard anybody say eliminate grades, stop grading, and you thought, wow, that's really crazy, um, I'm that crazy guy, and uh, in the next session, we're going to talk about different kinds of assessment, how to get kids to self-evaluate, uh, how to carry on a conversation about learning, and I'm going to challenge you to eliminate grades entirely, numbers, so you're, percentages, you're kids, letters. Kids could be internally motivated? I'm sorry? Kids could be internally motivated? Not everything can has be, to be externally motivated by grades. They, oh they my goodness! Uh, <laughs> really? That's right. Yeah, that's Intrinsic concept. motivation. Thanks, man. Wow. Intrinsic that's motivation. That's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. Uh, and I've got great stories to share. Uh, I do a whole Facebook group called "Teachers Throwing Out Grades." There's thousands of people there from all over the world. Um, so it's a real movement. It's exciting. Um, I'm, I'm really thrilled. I'm looking forward to it. Tonight was great, but boy, I've been so excited about that one. So. Please come back then and, and grab a bunch of friends and say, hey, this shindig thing is really wild. And there's this crazy our, guy that's going to talk about throwing out grades. And our website where you can see all the upcoming events is www.edchatinteractive.org. Uh, and we'll be, if you, if, if you allowed us to email you um, with the announcements of events, we'll be sending out an announcement next, uh, probably tomorrow of uh, the next two or three. Uh, webcast that we'll be doing, and one of which is Mark's. So um, I, I'm really hoping that you can, uh, you all obviously got invitations to this. If you can reply to those invitations and let us know what you liked about this, what you think that we can do to be better. Um, we're at the beginning of trying this as a way to really spread best practices in education. 
and uh, we're trying to we're trying to learn. So uh, thank you for joining us. We hope that you got a lot out of this. I certainly um, a got a lot out, and uh, b it really enjoyed listening to Mark. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night, and I hope to see you uh, in the um, cyberspace.